Imagine a world torn by war and ambition, where heroes rise and fall with each battle. In the heart of ancient China, during the era of the Three Kingdoms, stood a warrior known for his valor and prowess on the battlefield. This is the story of Ma Chao, a figure whose life was marked by fierce battles, shifting alliances, and a relentless pursuit of honor and justice. Join us as we journey back to the second century, unraveling the tale of Ma Chao, a man whose name became synonymous with bravery and whose legacy still echoes through history. Welcome to our exploration of a legendary era where heroes were forged in the fires of war. In 176 AD, Ma Chao was born into a poor family in Fufeng Maoling, who survived by chopping and selling wood. His grandfather Ma Ping once served as the Langganwei in Tianshui, but later lost his official position. Due to the family's poverty, he married a Chang woman, who gave birth to Ma Chao's father, Ma Teng. Before Ma Teng joined the campaign of Yangzhou Governor Gengbi against rebels like Kingdom, he often chopped wood in Zhangshan and carried it to the city to sell, to support his family. In 194 AD, Ma Teng, due to personal matters, sought help from Li Qie, who then controlled the Emperor Xian of Han, but his request was denied. Angered, Ma Teng prepared to attack Li Qie with his troops. The Emperor Xian of Han sent envoys to mediate, but both sides ignored them. Subsequently, Han Sui, stationed in Xincheng, came forward to mediate but ended up allying with Ma Teng to attack Li Qie together. The two sides battled at Tangping Guan, but the Ma'an Han forces were defeated and retreated back to Liangzhou. Ma Chao, then 18, was already of age to lead troops in battle. In 195 AD, Ma Teng petitioned the court, citing insufficient military supplies and requesting to station his troops and store grain in Shia. After receiving permission, he moved his troops to the banks of Tampi. The three-vessel rebellion, Ma Chao led his troops to conquer the Su's dock, seizing horses and other military resources. In 196 AD, Ma Teng and Han Sui, due to minor frictions among their subordinates, turned against each other, despite previously being as close as brothers. In this conflict, Ma Chao, just 20 years old, joined his father in battle against Han Sui. By this time, Ma Chao had already gained a reputation as brave in the strong and brave army of Liangzhou. In the camp of Han Sui, there was also a warrior named Yan Xing, known for his bravery. In one encounter, Yan Xing tried to spear Ma Chao, but Ma Chao broke the spear. Then, Yan Xing hit Ma Chao on the neck with the broken spear, almost killing him. From 197 to 198 AD, after becoming enemies, Ma Teng initiated an attack on Han Sui, who was defeated and fled. Later, An Sui regrouped and counterattacked, killing Ma Teng's wife and children. The two continued their relentless battles, with neither able to completely overcome the other. In 199 AD, Xun Yu advised Cao Cao, the power in Guanzhong is fragmented, with only Ma Chao and Han Sui being the strongest forces. He suggested that Cao Cao should win over Ma Chao and Han Sui. Consequently, Cao Cao appointed Zhong Zhou as Shu Zhong and acting colonel director of retainers, entrusting him with the command of the armies in Guanzhong and granting him extraordinary powers. Upon arriving in Tang'an, with the assistance of Liangzhou pastor Wei Duan, Zhong Zhou wrote to Ma Teng and Han Sui, outlining the pros and cons of their situation. Both Ma Teng and Han Sui sent their heirs to the court as hostages. From 200 to 201 AD, during Cao Cao battle with Yuan Shao at Guandu, to pacify Ma Teng and Han Sui and alleviate concerns about their rear, the court appointed Tang as Southern General and Han Sui as Western General, allowing them to establish their own offices. However, at this time, Ma Chao held no official position. In 202 AD, taking advantage of Cao Cao campaign in Hebei and the resultant vulnerability of Guanzhong, Yuan Shang sent Guo Yuan and Gao Gan to collaborate with the Southern Huns to capture Hedou. With Guanzhong under the weak control of Colonel Director of Retainers, Zhong Zhou, he wrote to Ma Teng and Han Sui about the dire situation and sent Zhang Ji and Fu Gan to persuade them. Ma Teng then dispatched Ma Chao, with over 10,000 troops to assist in Guanzhong. The court appointed Ma Chao as Colonel Director of Retainers to campaign against Guo Yuan and Gao Ga. When Guo Yuan personally led his troops across the Fenghe, Ma Chao ambushed them mid-crossing. During the battle, Ma Chao was injured by an arrow in his foot but did not retreat. He wrapped the wound and continued to lead his troops, decisively defeating Yuan forces. Ma Chao General Pang De personally beheaded Guo Yuan, followed by the surrender of Gao Gan and the Xiongnu. This courageous battle earned Ma Chao the title, Valiant Warriors, in later times. When Cao Cao served as Prime Minister, he tried to appoint Ma Chao as Shuzhou Governor, but Ma Chao refused to take the position. Consequently, Cao Cao appointed Ma Chao as admonished the doctor, from 203 to 204 AD, Ma Chao, along with his father Ma Teng, was stationed in Sanfu, guarding against the northern Hu tribes and the rebel Zhang Baiqi in the east. 
They treated scholars well, promoted talented individuals, and showed compassion by rescuing and helping the people, earning great admiration from the populace of Senfu. Between 205 and 207 AD, Gaogan gathered his former troops and rebelled again in Bingzhou, Cao dispatched Zheng Ji to gather forces including Ma Teng, Han Sui, and Ma Chao from the west, and they decisively defeated the armies of Gaogan and Zhang Sheng, executing the rebels like Wei Gu. The court then appointed Ma Teng as former general, Marquis of Huai Li, and granted him the Jiajie. Ma Chao also accompanied his father and stationed troops in Huai Li. In 208 AD, Ma Teng, due to discord with Han Sui and feeling the burden of age, accepted Zhang Ji's advice to enter the court. He was appointed as one of the nine ministers, especially the Wei Wei. Brothers, Ma Xiu and Ma Tie, he was appointed as captain of the Bongchak and cavalry respectively. However, Ma Chao stayed behind in Liangzhou, appointed as partial general and marquis of Douting, leading Ma Teng troops and controlling the Ma family's stronghold in Senfu, still stationed in Wai Li. In 209 AD, during the Battle of Chibi between Cao Cao and the Sunlu Alliance, despite the power struggle between Ma Chao and Han Sui posing a threat to Cao Cao, they did not take any action against him. In 210 AD, Zhou Yu proposed to Sun Chen a plan to capture the two Sichuans and ally with Ma Chao to encircle Cao Cao, but the strategy was never implemented due to Zhou Yu's death. The fact that Zhou Yu's plan did not involve allying with Han Sui highlights Ma Chao's prestige and strength in the north at the time. In March 211, Cao Cao sent Zhongzhou and Xia Houyuan to lead troops from Hedong, intending to pass through the territories of Ma Chao and other Liangzhou warlords to attack Zhang Lu in Hanzhou. The Guanxi warlords, led by Ma Chao and Han Sui, suspected Cao Cao's intention to attack and annex Liangzhou. Anticipating Cao Cao's strategy, Ma Chao utilized his political influence in the northwest of Guanzhou, uniting the generals of Liangzhou to resist Cao Cao. He led an army of a hundred thousand to the Weihe and Tongguan, building fortified camps. Sent Cao Ren, Xia Houyuan, and Zhongzhou to defend, and due to the formidable Guanxi troops, ordered his generals to hold their positions and not to attack rashly, awaiting the arrival of Cao Cao's main army. In July 203-204 AD, Cao Cao led the Central Plains Army on a personal western campaign, confronting Ma Chao coalition at Tongguan. In August, Cao Cao crossed the Yellow River north of Tongguan and sent Xu Huang and Zhu Ling with 4,000 troops to secretly cross at Pubanjin during the night. Upon learning this, Ma Chao dispatched Yang Xing with 5,000 soldiers to attack Xu Huang but was repelled. Xu Huang then established a camp west of the river. When Cao Cao himself led his troops across the north of Tongguan, his vanguard had just crossed, and he, along with Xu Chu and a hundred tiger guards, covered the rear. Suddenly, Ma Chao led thousands of cavalry in a surprise attack, causing chaos in Cao Cao's ranks. Despite this, Cao Cao remained seated on his camp bed, unperturbed. Seeing the urgency, generals like Xu Chu and Zhang He lifted Cao Cao and hurriedly carried him onto a boat to cross the river. Ma Chao? Cavalry pursued, showering them with arrows like rain, nearly costing Cao Cao his life. His tiger guard Xu Chu used a saddle to block the arrows and a pole to push the boat, desperately saving Cao Cao. Cao Cao? Subordinate Ding Fei released a large number of cattle and horses on the riverbank, distracting Ma Chao's soldiers from their pursuit as they ran to capture the fleeing animals, allowing Cao Cao to successfully cross the river. Cao Cao? Generals, unsure of his whereabouts and seeing their defeat, were extremely fearful. Upon seeing Cao Cao later, their emotions ranged from sadness and joy to outright crying. Cao Cao? Laughed, saying, Today, I was nearly trapped by that little bandit. Cao Cao? Then crossed the Wei River and constructed a pontoon bridge to Wei South. The Ma Han coalition lost their strategic position and could only retreat to defend, stationing troops at the mouth of the Wei River. Cao Cao? Repeatedly employed deception, secretly transporting troops by boat into the Wei River and constructing a floating bridge. One night, Cao Cao forces encamped in Wei South. The coalition launched a night attack on the camp, but Cao Cao ambush defeated the surprise attack of the Ma Han coalition. Ma Chao and others camped in Wei South, sending letters requesting peace talks by ceding territories in Heshi, but Cao Cao refused. Under Lo Gui's strategy of pouring water to build an ice fortress, Cao Cao's army crossed the Wei River in stages. The coalition challenged several times, but Cao Cao did not engage in battle. The coalition could only request peace by offering land and hostages. Cao Cao, adopting Jiaxu's strategy, pretended to agree, then had a friendly conversation with Han Sui in front of their troops, sowing distrust within the coalition. Cao Cao, also sent a forged letter of amnesty to Han Sui, further dividing the coalition. Seizing this opportunity, Cao Cao launched an attack near Wei South, resulting in a significant defeat for the coalition. Ma Chao, 
again sent emissaries to Cao Cao, seeking peace by offering Heshi territories, but Cao Cao refused. Ma Chao then retreated to Shangbang and Liangzhou, where he was welcomed by the locals led by Renya. Cao Cao, pursuing forces reached Anding, but due to rebellion in Hejian, he withdrew his troops to the east. Diplomat Yang Fu advised Cao Cao, Ma Chao has the valor of Han Xin and Yingbu, and is deeply supported by the Chang and Di people. The entire Xizhou greatly fears him. If the army returns without careful preparation, the counties in Ongshan might no longer belong to the state. After the Tongguan battle, tens of thousands of soldiers and civilians were killed or injured, and Cao Cao regretted not heeding Wei Ji advice and provoking the Guanzhong generals. In January 212 AD, shortly after his defeat at Tongguan, Ma Chao swiftly annexed the counties of Longsha, Zhanglu, also sent his general Yang Ang to assist Ma Chao, gathering over 10,000 troops to besiege Liangzhou Governor Wei Kang at the administrative center of Liangzhou, Jicha. In March, Wei Kang sent Yan Wen secretly out of the city to seek help from Xia Houyue. Yan Wen sneaked out by swimming at night. The next day, Ma Chao army discovered his trail and pursued him, catching up with Yan Wen at Xianqingjie. Ma Chao untied him and said, Victory and defeat are clear now. You were captured seeking help for a besieged city. How can you demonstrate loyalty? If you listen to me and tell the city that no reinforcements will come from the east, it could turn misfortune into fortune. Otherwise, I will kill you now. Yan Wen pretended to agree, and Ma Chao took him by carriage to Jicho. Yan Wen shouted to the city, reinforcements will come within three days, hold on. The city's inhabitants cried and prayed for him. An angry Ma Chao asked, Do you not value your life? Yan Wen did not respond. Since Ma Chao had been unable to capture the city, he tried to persuade Yan Wen to change sides, asking, Are there friends in the city who want to join me? Yan Wen ignored him, and Ma Chao scolded him harshly. Yan Wen replied, The path of serving one's lord only ends in death. You want an elder to speak unjust words. Am I a person who clings to life unethically? Ma Chao then executed him. In May 203 to 204 AD, Cao Cao captured and executed all members of Ma Chao family in Yicha. Meanwhile, he dispatched Xia Houyuan Western Expeditionary Force to aid Yicha. By August, with Xia Houyuan reinforcements still not arrived, Wei Kang surrendered the city to Ma Chao, who then allowed Zhang Lu General Yang Ang to execute the governor Wei Ka. When Xia Houyuan led his forces to attack, they were defeated by Ma Chao army about 200 li from Jicha. Subsequently, the Di Kings Bai Qing Di King Yang Tianwan and Xing Guo Di Wang Agui also joined Ma Chao, stationing their forces in Xing Guo. Xia Houyuan then retreated to Chang'an. Ma Chao used Jicheng as a base, controlling Long's Hang. He called himself the General of Westward Expansion and the Chief Historian of the Province of Bingzhou, overseeing military affairs in Liangzhou. In 213 AD, Ma Chao control over Long's Hang lasted over a year. Former subordinates of Wei Kang plotted a rebellion and sent Yang Mo to Ji Yue to ally with An Ding, Liang Quan, Nan'an, Zhao Qu, and Pang Gong in planning an uprising. In September, Yang Fu and Jiang Xu led a rebellion in Lu Che. Zhao Qu and Yin Feng persuaded Ma Chao to attack them. After Ma Chao left, Liang Quan and Zhao Qu secretly took Ji Cheng, closing the gates and killing Ma Chao wife and children. Enraged, Ma Chao attacked Li Cheng, killing the relatives of Yang Fu and Jiang Xu there. Yang Fu then led the rebels against Ma Chao. In a battle, Yang Fu and seven of his family members surrounded Ma Chao, all of whom were killed by Ma Chao. Even with five serious wounds, Yang Fu continued to fight fiercely. When Xia Houyuan reinforcements arrived, Ma Chao lost his base and, in a difficult situation, had no choice but to seek refuge with Zhang Lu in Hanzhou. As a result of this battle, eleven individuals, including Yang Fu, were ennobled for their role in defeating Ma Chao. In the spring of 214 AD, after joining Zhang Lu, Ma Chao was highly esteemed and appointed as the deputy chief priest in the Five Pecks of Rice sect, second only to Zhang Lu. Zhang Lu planned to marry his daughter Zhang Qiying to Ma Chao, but retracted the proposal after persuasion from his subordinates. Ma Chao borrowed troops from Zhang Lu to counterattack Yangzhou. He besieged Qishan for 30 days but failed to capture it. Later, Xia Houyuan sent Zhang He with reinforcements. Ma Chao, abandoning further attacks, left his military equipment as a decoy and retreated to Hanzhou. Fearing Ma Chao capabilities, Zhang Lu subordinate Yang Bai planned to harm him prompting Ma Chao to flee into the Di territories. Coincidentally, Liu Bei was leading his forces into Sichuan at this time. Liu Bei sent Li Hui to ally with Ma Chao. Realizing Zhang Lu was not a leader for great causes, Ma Chao wrote to Liu Bei, requesting to join him. 
On the first day of the first month of 215 AD, Ma Tao concubine's brother, Dong Zhong, came to wish Ma Tao a happy new year. Distraught, Ma Tao beat his chest and coughed up blood, lamenting, all of my family, over a hundred people, have been killed. What is there for us to celebrate now? In the summer, when Obe heard of Ma Tao's intention to join him, he joyfully said, I have gained the province. He sent people to welcome Ma Tao and secretly entrusted him with an army to encircle Chengdu. Ma Tao led his troops directly to Chengdu, camping north of the city. The city's inhabitants, terrified by Ma Tao's reputation, quickly collapsed, and within ten days, Liu Zhang surrendered. After pacifying Xichuan, Liu Bei appointed Ma Tao as General Pingxi, overseeing military affairs in Linju, and retained his title as Marquis of Duti. In October 217 AD, during Liu Bei's struggle with Cao Cao over Hanzhong, Ma Tao and several generals were stationed at Xiapian, where over 10,000 people from the Dizu, led by Lei Ding, responded to Ma Tao's call. In March 218 AD, Cao Cao personally led a large army to contest Hanzhong, and Liu Bei held his ground, with Ma Tao and Zhang Fei withdrawing their forces back to Hanzhou. In 219 AD, Liu Bei captured Hanzhou. In the autumn, over 120 officials of Shu Han, led by Ma Tao, jointly submitted a memorial titled Petition to Establish the King of Hanzhou, urging Liu Bei to proclaim himself King of Hanzhou. After Liu Bei ascended to kingship, he appointed Ma Tao as General Zhua. In 220 AD, Peng Yang, upset about being assigned to a distant post, went to meet Ma Tao. Ma Tao told him, your talents are exceptional. Our lord highly values you, saying you are on par with Zhuge Liang and Fa Zhe. Why would he disappoint you with a minor assignment? Peng Yang replied dismissively about Liu Bei and told Ma Tao, you are an external official, and I am an internal supporter. There is nothing we cannot settle in this world. Ma Tao, who had spent his life as a fearsome warrior and was constantly wary under Liu Bei, was shocked by Peng Yang's words and remained silent. After Peng Yang left, Ma Tao reported his words as they were. Consequently, Peng Yang was arrested and imprisoned. Later, following Zhuge Liang's advice, Liu Bei executed Peng Yang. In 221 AD, Liu Bei proclaimed himself emperor, inheriting the title of Han, historically known as Shu Han, or later Han. He established the first year of his reign as Zhang Wu. Ma Tao was appointed as cavalry general, governor of Liangzhou, and ennobled as the Marquis of Taixia. Liu Bei Edict stated, I possess no great virtues, yet I have succeeded to the emperor's throne, continuing the Lu family's reign. The sins of Cao Cao and his son Cao Pi will be remembered through generations. I am deeply grieved and distressed. All within the four seas resent the Cao family, longing to return to the righteous path of the great Han. Considering the Dianqiang tribe's adherence and the Xiongnu admiration of your righteousness, and given your credibility in the north and your esteemed reputation for bravery, I hereby entrust you with this responsibility. I hope you will be as vigorous as a roaring tiger, commanding the vast territories, alleviating the suffering of the people. Promote the court's good governance, ensure internal peace and external security, and treat rewards and punishments with utmost caution, so that the blessings of the Han may flourish, thereby justifying the trust of the people. In 222 AD, Ma Chao fell seriously ill and sent a memorial to Liu Bei. My family, more than 200 people, were nearly annihilated by Cao Cao, leaving only my cousin Ma Dai. I entrust my humble family to him, and place them under your majesty's care. I have nothing more to say. In December of the same year, Ma Tao passed away at the age of 47.